praise the Lord. Is it because he is awesome? Is it because he is powerful? 
We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Praise be your name. Praise be your name. Worship our Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Please continue to pray, play something very soft, very, very soft. I looked around, I looked at everybody's um, feet and I see that we are all wearing comfortable shoes. Because we said today we are going to pray. Do we remember? Okay. And this morning I was driving to, to the restaurant. And the Holy Spirit told me to share a testimony. It's a story. It's a story, and I know some of us have heard this story before. It's not new to some of us, and to some that you have never heard it before, maybe it's because of you that God is bringing the story. To some of us that have heard the story before, maybe God is bringing it back so that you can hear it again. You know, in the, the Bible says that we should not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Don't forsake it. I'm sure one, two, three, four, if not all of us, have had encounter during one of the programs, whether it's uh, um, Treasures from Heaven, World Cafe, Sunday Service, Sunday Sermon, Prayers on Monday, in various capacities, in various ways. We have been ministered to, sometimes it could be during the announcement, somebody walk up here, say something, and you're thoroughly blessed by it. Maybe it's the way the person said it. Maybe it was just God speaking at that time to you specifically. And the, the person will say, on the videos of announcement, have a wonderful week. And it will feel like you have never heard that word before. It has happened to us many times. Many, many times. So we are going to be praying, of course, about the team that we have been talking about from the beginning of the month, faith, prayer. But we want to destroy old of our lives. Like I said, I've shared this before. When I um, came to United States, 2002, before I came, a couple of months before I came, I was in our living room and I just fell. I didn't even know I had fallen. This is to prepare us to pray. Just pay attention to the word. Pay attention to what God is saying to you. And I just fell down on the floor. I actually didn't know I had passed out at some point. I just op op opened my eyes and I saw the people, my family over my head. And boom, boom, they were calling my name. And I opened my eyes and I said, what happened? And they said to me, ah, you fainted. I'm like, really? And they asked me, what's wrong with you? I'm like, nothing. And I got up and everything, uh, my mom said, no, you are going to the hospital. So they took me to the clinic. They did tests. And they said everything was fine. And I didn't think anything about it. Then it happened again. I was young and I didn't think anything about it. Then I... A couple of months after that, I came, relocated to United States. And I was in the living room, maybe about six, seven months after I had arrived. And it happened again. And I just fell on the floor. And they took me, of course, called EMS. They came, picked me up, took me to the hospital. You know America, thorough. I said to my mom, it looks like every blood in my body, they have... They have they have taken it. They did every test. That was the first time I was doing 
several labs work that I never knew existed. So they did all the tests, and after doing all the tests, they said nothing was wrong with me. I should go home. So they discharged me, and, went, and I went home. A couple of months after that, it happened again. And then they took me back. To, of course, em emergency ward. They came, picked me up, the ambulance. I was there. And this time, the, the lady said, I'm gonna, we are going to keep you for a couple of days and observe. So they put all this machine all over my body. They were reading my heart, reading heart, whatever it is. They were reading everything. And after the three days, the lady said, nothing is wrong with you. So they told me to follow up with my my doctor and as i was being discharged the lady said you know wait 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 let us call your doctor so they called him and they told him oh we want to put i don't know what it's called <laughs> i don't i won't I, I will never remember that we have to put it on her she have to do everything because i was laying on the hospital bed doing nothing so if anything was to trigger something, it wouldn't happen because I was laying down. And they wanted to find out what was the trigger, what was causing that to happen. So they said they were going to give me this machine to go home with. I had to wear it every and do every single thing that I would normally do. So they put this on me and they had to give me a note to carry around because 9-11 had just happened maybe about a year and a half before that time. So security was very, very tight and, you know, so I had to get on the train, and the lady told me, don't skip anything. And I couldn't shower, I had to wipe myself. Don't skip any activity. If you go to the gym, go to the gym. Whatever you were doing, you do every day, do it for seven days. I went to church with it, I did every single thing, went to school, went to work with it. And then, after the, seven, the eighth day, I went back to the, to the doctor. And they said, nothing is wrong with you. And the, the, the doctor told me, nothing is wrong with you. You are fine. You are a very um, healthy young adult. He said, I am just so worried that if you fall, that you hit your head and something terrible happens. And then as I was leaving the doctor's place, I got on a bus. And then I remember I usually take the train. And the picture of me standing in front of the, by the platform, and God forbid it happens, and train is coming, and nobody can jump in to save me what then happens. So it wouldn't have been me fainting that killed me. God forbid, it would have been something else. So I was worried from there. Like, what is this? Why can they not find what is wrong? Couple of Weeks after that, or maybe months, I can't remember now. It's been a long time. I came to church on a Sunday. That's why you can, you don't know when. I came to church on a Sunday, and the pastor said, today we are going to pray. And I remember, I know now that God made us to pray because of me. And then she started talking about patterns. She started talking about things that we occur over and over and over and over again. And he asked a question. Are you tired of it? And I'm asking you all this morning. Are you tired? Okay. And I remember the first thing that came out of my mouth is, I am so tired from, like it was yesterday. I'm not, I am tired. And as I said the word, I am tired, he began to give us, you know, to talk about many things. We prayed. And I believed God. And I can tell you, it has been 22 years it has never happened again. And it will never happen again. And do you know why I told, I'm telling this story? I'm going to now backtrack to when I was born. There was something, you know, there's something called the transference of spirit. And that's what God wants us to pray about. The transference of spirit. The things that we inherit, whether it is because somebody spoke it into our lives or whether it is something that is in the family, whether it is from household wickedness. My birth was very, very, very strange, so, so to say. My dad's older sister passed away the June of the year that I was born. And I was born December. 
And my grandmother, before that happened, before she passed away, her husband had passed away. Her husband was in his late early 40s when he passed away. And she was, of, of course, she was in her late 30s when her husband passed away. And now, our oldest child, only girl, was just taken away. And then, my grandmother, by the grace of God, died a Christian. Was, I've, never, I've always known, him, known her, a Christian. Went to go and protect, try to protect everybody else. So, my grandmother, now when the girl, the, my late aunt died, my grandmother now said, my mom was pregnant with me. So, my grandmother now said, the girl that died is coming back. And she walked on it. So, where she went, they told her there will be a sign on the baby to let you know that she actually came back. So, when I was born, my grandmother rushed into the hospital, carried the baby, because that, be, that, that cannot be me. Carried the baby and went to look for the sign. And the sign was there. And she said, ah! And then she began to cry. And she began to say many, many things. Why did you leave me in the first place? Why did you go away? Blah, blah, blah. I just realized that growing up, my grandmother was so fond of me. Never let me leave the house. When my older sister will be running around and my younger ones will be running around, my cousins, we all lived with her. I was always there. Beside her, I'm like, what is the problem? I didn't realize until about five years ago. When I asked my father questions. And said there were so many strange things that happened when you, were, when you were born. And she said some of them that I don't want to share. But it was a particular one. She, he said when I was about nine months old. My late aunt had um, shares, stocks and all of that. So they were looking for a portfolio. She kept it somewhere before she went to London to do a surgery and she died. She died from the same complication. So when she went to do, um, they were looking for the portfolio. They were looking for it. Everybody had searched, my grandmother, my, my dad, everybody. They couldn't find it. Said the nine-month-old baby crawled to where the portfolio was and brought the portfolio out, crawled back with the portfolio, went to go and give it to my grandmother where she was sitting. And when my father, my dad told me, I'm like, God had separated me from that life. He, that cannot be me. The funny thing is, they gave her every single, you know, they didn't allow me to have my own identity. They gave me every single of her name. So for a long time before God delivered me, I was carrying another person's identity. When God created me in my mother's womb, she was not dead at that time. She was alive when God put me in my mother's womb. And when God was sending me, God had a purpose for my life. God created me for a reason. But men wanted to change the destiny that God has given me. Because when you transfer spirit, you transfer both negative and positive. She was married. She never had a child. She had, I think they said heart mama or heart something. She went to UK to do surgery and she died in the process. It now looked like everything that she had, the old me had it. It was a service. Nobody lifted their hands and put it on my head. It was God. Because I determined in my heart that enough is enough. You have to get to a point where you don't want it anymore. You have to get to a point where nobody's going to cajole you to pray. If you want to pray, you pray. If you don't want to pray, you leave it alone. You have to get to a point where you make up your mind, I am going to drop it today and it will never leave this place with me. 
You have to make up your mind. It was not anybody. The pastor did not come to me personally. Nobody saw a vision. Nobody told me anything. But I knew it was, I did not even know the depth of what was happening until recently. But it was one touch from the Lord and he cleared everything out. And God redirected, repositioned and brought me back to where I was supposed to be. I do not have to carry another person's identity. I now carry the identity that God has given me when he put me in my mother's womb. It was not the word of a man. Anybody cannot rearrange my life. Just like the case of Jabez, that her mother used her mouth to restructure Jabez's life. And an honorable man was now struggling with life. He was in pain. He was in sorrow because somebody spoke a word. It was not recorded that Jabez went to any pastor. Jabez made up her mind that enough is enough. I am not going to leave this place that I'm standing with this. Pain must finish. And the moment he said it, I so much love it. I have been looking for, in case anybody else has seen another Bible passage that has Jabez's story in it. That's the only one that I know. It was not recorded in First Chronicles and then in Revelation, tell us what God did. It was in the same place that he spoke the word. He spoke God's word and he said I, it was his own realization. He came to his own knowledge that I am more honorable than this. This is not who I am. And God rewrote the story of Jabez. Not, not rewrote, actually. I'll take that back. Because before he came, God had written his story. He, um, his mother rewrote the story. God took Jabez back to original plan. Because Jabez was an honorable man. But honor was not speaking in his life because his mother spoke. There might have been a, a rearrangement. This prayer might be not for everybody. Might be for a few people. But I want to encourage you this morning that you will pray. I want to encourage you that you will pray. In the few minutes that we are going to be praying. Genesis chapter 28 verse 15. Genesis chapter 28 verse 15. This is the word of God that I bring unto you. And accept it as if God is talking to you directly what's more I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go he said one day and that day is today I will bring you back to this land I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you let me read the King James he said and behold I am with thee and I will keep thee on all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I, I, I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. God's plan for us is always good to bring us to an expected end. I don't know, I, I'm sure God is still going to tell us why he has been talking about his plan and an expected end. He will say it, I'm sure. Because God is not a talkative, he just doesn't talk. He will bring us to an expected end. The thing is, like we said last week, if you are not walking towards your expected end, how would you get to the expected end? Some people their destiny had been truncated. They have moved it around. So the person is not walking towards the expected end. And the person is wondering, why am I still in this place? Why does it look like I have played too? I am not moving. God is moving you ahead in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's original plan for Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1. Let's read verse 28 very quickly. I want us to read it because that's where we are going to start the prayers from. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. There was an original plan of God for us. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful 
multiply and replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This was the original plan of God for us, to, be, to multiply, be, replenish, subdue the earth, to, 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 to be fruitful in all area of our lives. That was the original plan of God. But because of sin, the original plan of God was now, the God now cursed the snake, cursed the woman, cursed the man, cursed the ground that will yield this supposed um, fruitfulness and harvest. Because of a sin. But then our father in his very good nature, in his kindness, loving kindness, in his mercy, had to send Jesus to come and rewrite this. To come and move us back to the original plan of God. The original plan of God for us is not to be in sorrow. The original plan of God is not to be in pain. The original plan of God for us is to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, to have dominion over everything that he had created. The original plan of God is not for us to wonder about looking for our daily bread there was a provision in the original plan of god he provided what they needed it was not that you will have to go and cultivate you didn't have to plant it was the original plan of god for you to have in abundance it was sin that made them to begin to now labor before eating but jesus came to give us life and give life to us abundantly. He came to move us back to the original plan of God for your life. I want you to begin to pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the Lord will move you back to the original plan of his for your life. Whatever it is that God has destined you to be. Whatever it is that God has written concerning you. Whatever word of the Lord that has been spoken in your life. That the Lord will move you back to the original plan of his for your life. Every single one of us, we have different plan of God. God. We have things that we are supposed to be. We have things that we are supposed to do in this earth. That's why you are here. You did not come as a goat. You were not as you did not. We were not planted like a tree. You came as a person. You are here for a reason. That the original plan of God for your life that you will begin to walk in it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will begin to walk in it in the name of Jesus. You go back to the original plan of God. The original plan of God is for us to be fruitful. The original plan of God. It's for us to multiply. The original plan of God is the plan with provision. Not the one that we will sorrow. Not the one in pain. In the name of Jesus, I move back to the original plan of God for my life. In the name of Jesus, I move back to the original plan of God for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, every word that has been spoken into my life, that has displaced me. Every word that has been spoken into my tomorrow, that has been spoken into my family, that has been spoken concerning my children, that is causing delay that is causing delay in our lives in the name of Jesus be we raised by the blood of the Lamb every heel spoken word be raised by the blood of the Lamb every heel spoken word be raised by the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we move back oh God to your original plan for our life in the name of Jesus no cause no enchantment no divination will continue to walk in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus we move back in the name of Jesus, we say enough is enough. It has told you have come, but you will not proceed any further. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not proceed any further. In the mighty name of Jesus, we move back. In the name of Jesus, we move back. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are fruitful. We multiply. We take dominion. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Jehovah Lord, we subdue it. In the name of Jesus, we replenish. In the name of Jesus, we go back to the place of provision. We go back to the place of provision. We go back to the place where you are provided for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we go back to the place of provision. We go back to the place of provision. We will not struggle any longer. In the name of Jesus, we go back to your original plan for our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, the place of a provision, the place of abundance, Oh, the place that you already planned for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cancel every spoken word. In the name of Jesus, that is working in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we cancel it this morning. We cancel it in Jesus' name. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. There is a divine plan and a divine agenda for each of our lives. Yes. There is a divine plan of God for each of us. I want you to begin to pray it in the name of Jesus Christ that I refuse to be removed from the divine agenda and plan of God for my life. I refuse to be removed. I refuse to be displaced. I refuse to be taken away in the name of Jesus from the divine purpose, agenda and plan of God for my life in the name of Jesus. Oh, my children, you will not be displaced. My children, you will not be removed in the name of Jesus from the divine purpose and agenda for your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Every child, oh God, in our family, Family. Every child in the church, oh God, every child in the desire of nations and people, see, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be displaced, you will not be removed. In the name of Jesus, your future will not be truncated. No heel smoking word, whether it is from your parents, whether it is from your grandparents, whether it is for your foreparents, in the name of Jesus, whether it is from household wickedness, in the mighty name of Jesus, it will not stand, it will not work in your life in Jesus' name. You will not be displaced. You you will not be removed in the name of Jesus from the purpose of God for your life from the agenda of God for your life in the mighty name of Jesus the plan of God for your life is to bring you to an expected end you will not miss the expected end of God for your life in the mighty name of Jesus you will not miss it you will not miss it you will not miss it in the name of Jesus we cover your destiny we cover your tomorrow we cover your today with the precious blood of Jesus. We cover you with the precious blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be displaced. In the name of Jesus. You will be fruitful. You will multiply. You will walk in provision. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your life will not be a life of struggle. In the name of Jesus. You will not be removed from the divine plan of God for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you almighty father. In Jesus. Oh, mighty name, be afraid. Amen. There is an arrangement of God for each and every one of us. I want you to pray that you re I reject every rearrangement of my destiny by household wickedness. I reject every rearrangement. People are rearranging destiny. I think I've shared it here before. When somebody said, it, they, 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 it was, it was, she went to live with a family because her parents couldn't afford to give her tuition for school. So she had to be, she had to relocate to her, be her uncle or somebody's house. And she was living with them. And this auntie was diabolic and took her and her children to see a native doctor or juju priest and they looked into their future they looked into their destiny and they saw the destiny of this girl brighter than the destiny of her own children she says swipe it swipe the destiny give the destiny that belongs to my child this one that looks like not my own child because my children have great destiny that the, the destiny that is bright switch it switch it and they give they, they now did an evil exchange i want you to begin to pray for yourself and your seed that the lord will i reject every rearrangement of my destiny i reject every rearrangement of my destiny i reject it in jesus name my destiny the destiny of our children it will not be rearranged in the mighty name of jesus oh they will not swap our destiny the destiny of our children it will not be exchanged there will be no evil exchange in the mighty name of Jesus oh our adventure any of our destiny has been exchanged daddy we ask oh God that you will give it back in the name of Jesus for who it rightfully belongs to in the name of Jesus Christ oh Lord father with your powerful hand oh God daddy rearrange oh God let it bring it back oh God to your original plan to your original purpose in the mighty name of Jesus every rearrangement of our destiny by household wickedness we reject it in the mighty name of Jesus we replace it in the name of Jesus oh we restore our destiny that have been swapped in the name of Jesus we reject it in the name of Jesus and we receive what rightfully belongs to us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ thank you almighty father in Jesus precious name we are praying 
You know, in the day of social media now, everything, when people sneeze, they go on social media. When people cough, they go on social media. Every birthday of my children, I will share my birthday, my my husband's birthday, my sibling's birthday, anybody's birthday, I will share. Then sometimes last week, last year, before my husband's birthday, this lady shared a story. It was an interview. She granted an interview. A popular lady. She was married to a, a footballer, a soccer player. And she, their marriage was very beautiful. They had first twins and they had other children. I think they have four girls. And she would share. She said on her 10th year wedding anniversary, she went on social media and she posted a husband's a family picture. Happy 10th year anniversary to us. She said that same day, the same 10th day, the 10th year anniversary, the husband came. Instead of taking her to dinner as they had planned, beat her up. Beat her blue black. Her eye was swollen like this. Beat her like there was no tomorrow. She said that was the beginning of the problem. They were fighting every day. Until one day, one of the twins told her, Mommy, you have to leave if you want to leave. You have to leave this place if you want to leave. And she packed her stuff and she left. She, she separated, went somewhere. She said every person that she was telling, were like, this is impossible. Your husband? Your husband can't beat you. Said her husband, one of her husband's siblings said to her, you are the eye of your husband. You are the heart of your husband. You are the being of you. You are the life of your husband. If your husband hurt you, he hurt himself. I have never seen a husband that loves his, his wife the way your husband loves you. He was like, ah, did I go and meet Boxer? You cannot see the face. She said she was going from one mountain to another mountain to another mountain. And it was because she posted her joy she posted what she was enjoying she posted it she was just celebrating and that went on but the end of it was a testimony for me because they came back and whatever had happened to her husband was removed by the hand of God but it was a two year of torture Two years of pain. She said at some point she was leaving. Everybody that she wanted to live with, they, they, would, they would not believe her story. They were very comfortable, rich. Can you imagine that person? She said she went to live in somebody's house. They now turned her and her children to, to housemaids. People that she was giving money to, they were running from her. Do you know what it means to her? God forbid for us. It was a two years and over of torture because she dared to, sh to share her joy. Some people are not just happy. The person did not marry the husband, but the person does not want her happy. The person did not marry the man. The person just does not want her happy. Some people are envious of your smile. They want you to be in pain. Not because you have done anything to them, but your smile, your happiness, your joy brings them sadness. And they don't want to be sad. You are going to pray this morning. It doesn't matter who those people are. We believe in God. And the same God that told us that I will bring you back. It means they had left. They have been displaced. And he said in that Genesis chapter 28, he said, I will bring you back again. I want you to pray. Where, whatever it is that is in your life, in your family, 
that is already missing without your knowledge. Some people don't know why husband and wife cannot tolerate themselves anymore. Some people don't know why all of a sudden, the things that your wife do that makes you happy, you are now just irritated by it. You are just irritated by her speaking. You are just God forbid for you. I want us to begin to pray that any hand of the devil in our families, any hand of the devil over our children, over our lives, that the Lord will remove it. The powerful hand of God will remove it in the name of Jesus. Every leftover that the Lord vacuum them out in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that is in our lives, everything that is in our home, that does not belong. Everything that is in our lives, everything that is in our homes, that does not belong there. Father, remove them. Jehovah, remove them. Father, remove them in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that is already working against your plan for our lives. Everything that is already working against your plan for our children. In the name of Jesus. For our marriage, for our jobs, for our career, for our health. Against all that you have given unto us. Father, remove them. Father, erase them by the power that is in your name. Father, erase them, O oh God. Erase them, O oh God. Remove them, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Set us free indeed tonight. In the name of Jesus. Set them free. In Jesus. Almighty name. We have prayed. You know, we were talking about transference of spirit. And I almost forgot that prayer. Transference of spirit. Every one of us, we have the expected end of God for our lives. We have what God has spoken concerning our lives. And some people, sometimes it's not because they are bad people. Not because they are bad people. I remember when my dad was telling me the story, he was like, I'm sure it was just a mother's instinct. And then you go. That's why who you share your story with, who you talk to, very important. If that person is not in Christ, don't even try. Because it's either they take you the way of the world or they take you even more into danger. Because they will tell you, we will, pro we will protect your children. They will not die. They will be protected. But they will not tell you that there need to be a sacrifice every five, five years. They will not tell you that there need to be an atonement every 10, 10 years. They will not tell you that this God that is bringing this provision, this protection will require this and this and this and this. They will just tell you what to bring now. By the time they go back to them in 10 years that something is happening, well, they will say, ah, but you, and then they will now say, oh, it's because you have not come to make atonement. Then I say, but you didn't tell us. They will say, but you did not ask. How are you supposed to know? So, so many times, it's not because they are bad. They just had, they just make wrong choices. They went to the God of the land. They went to the gods that their friend knows. They went to the God that their friend says work for them. But that same God does not work for you. Now you are a new person. But something is speaking. So many times they have transferred things into people's lives. So many times people that God has made to be the head, they will not become slaves because the God is working. They have transferred things into people's lives. So many times they go and they say, please give me a child. The person that God had said will have a child, will have a child. Whether they wait on God or they decide to go and use the diabolic way. And they will now tell them, this is what the child will be. And then the child all of a sudden will begin to grow and become terror and be fighting and be killing people and be doing stuff. When God was ordering the life of this child, because with God, nothing comes out of anywhere without God's permission. And then the, the boy or the girl that God had given a glorious destiny, they will now speak a God into the life of the child. And the child will begin to misbehave. Or in some, in some cases, they will now call a child that is coming from heaven or is or our own. They will call them Baba Jide. They will call them Baba Tunde. They will now begin to call the things from the dead person into the life of this new child that is coming for the first time. I want you to begin to pray. Because most of us, we don't ask questions. Most of us don't know all those things. Because we, are, we don't know. We don't ask our parents questions. I want you to pray. But adventure there is any transference of any evil. Any transference of any spirit. Any transference of anything that God did not create with me. Father by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Erase them oh God. Erase them oh God. Erase them oh God. Every power. Every spirit that has been spoken into any of our lives that did not come with you. Anything oh God that you did not create with us. That is 
speaking in our lives. Father, take them out. Jehovah, take them out in the name of Jesus. Father, take them out, oh God. Father, take them out, oh God. Take us back again. Take us back to your original plan. Take us back as your promise. Take us back as your promise. You said that you are with us and you will take us back. Take us back, oh God, to your original plan, to what you have created when you created us. In the mighty name of Jesus, every transference of spirit, in the name of Jesus, oh, we disassociate with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are not that dead person. We do not belong to that. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are new. We are brand new person. God created us with our own lives, with our own identity, with our own future, with what you have in plan for us. In the name of Jesus, that that you have given unto us, that is what we will become. That is who we will become. In the mighty name of Jesus, guys, never again are we going to carry another person's identity. Never again are we going to carry the identity of a deity. Never again are we going to carry the identity of a strange God in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, our identity is in Christ Jesus. We belong to the family of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, an end has come to it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, let there be a transfer, oh God. Father, take us back. In the name of Jesus, bring us back, oh God, to your original plan for our lives. In the name of Jesus. We will not be that other person in the name of jesus every one of us individually have our own identity and the way that you have created us oh no we do not belong there we are not that person in the name of jesus we claim our own identity we walk according to the identity that you have given unto us in the mighty name of jesus we do not speak like them we do not act like them we do not look like them in the mighty name of jesus we do not carry their sickness we do not carry their pains we do not carry what befell them in the mighty name of jesus their faith will not be our faith we will not die young but we will live to fulfill God's plan for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we do not we do not conform to it we are not them in the name of Jesus Christ we walk in our identity we walk in what you have given unto us in the mighty name of Jesus and it will work for our lives in Jesus almighty name we are prayed in Jabez case a mother spoke and Jabez was demoted. It was not God's agenda for Jabez. Jabez did not die. He was just demoted from the place of honor that God had created him to be. He struggled in life. He was in pain. Not because God had created pain with him. It was not Jabez's portion to live in pain. It was because his mother spoke pain into his life. And Jabez was demoted. I want you to begin to pray. That the Lord peradventure. Because like I said, the only reason why every one of us will pray about it is because we don't know. If I didn't ask questions, there are many things that we don't know. And I remember that it was my husband that advised me very well. He said, Bumi, talk to your dad talk to your dad and I remembered when his father came before he passed away my husband was always asking questions he would ask him this question he would ask him that question me and my husband said ask and because I know I called the rest of my siblings and I said ha you better pray <laughs> it in fact is God will not make us to get to heaven and they now show you a picture of who you are supposed to be. God will not make us to get to heaven. And we will now see the glory that you carried. But because it was mortgaged, somebody else swapped it. If God will let us see, we will know that we are more than this. We will know that this is not where we are supposed to be. What is it that God has written concerning you that has been taken away from you? This in the case of Jabez, God did not call pain with Jabez. It was Jabez's mother that demoted Jabez. I want us to begin to pray that in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, every place that belongs to me, 
people that have been demoted from. Jehovah, by the power that is in your right hand, I gain the promotion back. I get the promotion back. The Lord is bringing me back there in the name of Jesus. For everywhere that it belongs to me, in the mighty name of Jesus, position that belongs to me, what you have written concerning me, what you have said concerning me, the template of your life concerning my life. When I was leaving heaven, there was one thing that you gave to me. You gave me a glorious future. You told me to go and prosper. You told me to go and be well. You told me to take dominion. You told me to be in charge. You told me to go and be well. You told me to go and mark territory. You told me to go and subdue. You told me that the head and the food the zero belongs to you. Therefore, it is my inheritance. Oh, Jehovah God, everywhere that I have been promoted, whether it is the words of the mouth of a person, whether it is from the occultic, whether it is from somebody speaking negative into my life, I get my promotion back in the name of Jesus. Restore me, oh God. Restore me, oh God. Restore me in Jesus' name. 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 Restore my help in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, restore me back. In the name of Jesus. I am promoted. In the name of Jesus. I reject destiny demotion. In the mighty name of Jesus. I reject every destiny demotion. In the name of Jesus. Concerning my children. Concerning my husband. Concerning my home. Concerning my marriage. Concerning all that pertains to me. In the name of Jesus. I pray for all of my siblings. I pray for my parents, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jehovah God. Lord Jehovah. Restore. You are the God of restoration. You restore Jabez back to where he's supposed to be. From the place that he was demoted from. Jehovah Almighty. Restore me back, oh God. Restore me again. Like you said in your word. Restore me again. You restore me again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be restoration in my life. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration there. In Jesus' name. Let there be a restoration. In Jesus. Almighty oh, name. We have prayed. Amen. The story of Samson. A very wonderful story. There was a plan of God for Samson's life. The choices that Samson made took him away from the expected end. You know, we have heard many, many times people preach about it. That, oh, Samson did this one, Samson did that one. The, the, the instruction that we're given is don't cut his hair. And while the mother was pregnant, don't eat any um, grapes or um, don't drink wine. And he shouldn't too. It wasn't recorded that he drank wine. It wasn't recorded that his mother um, drank any wine or grapes. But what happened was he made a wrong choice that mortgaged his future. It was not Samson's parent. It was Samson himself. You see, sometimes when the glorious future is in your face and God is showing you all of these wonderful things and you are, you are knocking things down, you are making it, sometimes we forget the power that is behind all those things. And then we begin to do as we want. And so many times we digress and God forbid you fall. That was exactly what happened to Samson. He said, you will be the one that will deliver Israel from these Philistines. And he killed many of them. The Bible says that when Samson said he was going to go and marry in their midst, there was a reason. It was God that was turning the hearts of Samson in that direction. For him to go and marry them so that he can deal with them seriously. And he did. But that wasn't all that he was supposed to do. That was not all that Samson was supposed to do. It was not his mother's choice. It was not Samson's mother that said anything. Neither was this his father. But it was the choice of Samson. So some of us had mortgaged our own future by ourselves. By the choices that we make. By the things that we dip our hands to. 
many times we want to help God because the way of the Lord seems so slow and we want to help God to make it faster and by the time we put our hand into it he boomerangs and it becomes bad and then we begin to say where is God it wasn't God God had given Samson a very glorious future he had an expected end it was for him to deliver Israel from the Philistines but because Samson made a wrong choice he died in the process. I want you to pray. Paradventure, you have done something that had made your glorious future blinking or that had made you to sell it out to somebody else. Our God is the God of restoration. By his mercy, he will restore. I want us to begin to pray for the restoration and ask God for mercy and ask God for mercy of all the wrong choices that I have made, of all the wrong choices I have made. When you told me to go, I did not go. When you told me turn right, I yielded to the left. Jehovah King of glory, I repent of my ways. The days that you spoke and I did not listen. The place that you said I should wait and I did not listen to you. The things that you committed into my hand that I took very with, with levity, with not with not with half mindedly in the name of Jesus Christ Jehovah have mercy upon me I repent of my ways in Jesus name I repent of my ways in the mighty name of Jesus Father I say oh Lord by your mercy that you will restore in the name of Jesus restore oh God in the mighty name of Jesus the choices that I've made that have brought me to the place where I'm not supposed to be the choices that I have made that have displaced me on the path of glory the choices that I've made that have made my glory my my, my death destiny to be swapped with another Jehovah King of glory you are the God of restoration by your mercy Lord father restore Jehovah restore Jehovah restore father restore in the mighty name of Jesus you are the God of restoration restore me back oh God you said in your word that you will do it because you are with me father restore me back oh God Jehovah restore me back oh God father restore me back oh God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ I cover my destiny with the blood of Jesus. I want you to begin to cover your destiny. I want you to begin to cover your tomorrow. I want you to begin to cover all that the Lord has given unto you. Your glorious future. In the name of Jesus. The glorious future of your children. Everything that the Lord has committed into your hands. Everything that the Lord has given unto you. I cover with the precious blood of Jesus. I cover everything that you have given to me with the blood of Jesus. I say Satan, stay off in the mighty name of Jesus. Principalities and power, stay off in the mighty name of Jesus. Demon and assignment I terminate your work in my life in the name of Jesus Christ you will never prosper in my life you will never prosper in my life in my home in my marriage concerning my husband concerning my children concerning the business that you have committed into my hands concerning our jobs career in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Jehovah God I cover my home with the blood of Jesus I cover my marriage with the blood of Jesus I cover our health with the blood of Jesus I cover all that pertains to me with the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the ministry that that you have called me to become I am more than this I am more than this I walk in that ministry I walk in it I walk in it I begin it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ oh you have shown it to me oh God then I will feed the nation Father Lord Jehovah I begin to walk in it in the mighty name of Jesus and I cover it with the blood of Jesus every testimony that I have shared concerning my glorious future in the name of Jesus it will not be aborted it will not suffer corruption in the mighty name of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus upon all of my testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus I plead the blood of Jesus on all the words that I have shared of glorious of glorious future that you have for me in the mighty name of Jesus things that I have said carelessly in the name of Jesus I cover it with the righteous blood of Jesus it will not suffer corruption it will not suffer corruption in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you for this new time thank you for the water that is turning thank you for the new beginning thank you because you are starting afresh thank you because I have received it thank you Jehovah thank you Lord my glorious future the future of my husband the future of my children the future of my business the future of my life in the name of Jesus my health thank you oh God because you have covered them in the name of Jesus they are secured they are secured they are secured in you we are secured in you all is well with us in the mighty name of Jesus we walk in dominion we walk in power we subdue we overtake 
we recover her in the mighty name of Jesus. We take what rightfully belongs to us, everything that the devil has stolen. We receive them back in the mighty name of Jesus. We receive them back in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you because you are God. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, almighty oh, name, we are afraid. Do you believe? Have you received? Go ahead and begin to thank God. If you truly have received, if you have faith that the Lord has done it, if you have faith that the Lord has restored you, if you have faith that everything that has been stolen, taken, borrowed from you, that the Lord has restored them back to you, multiple ways, in multiple times, they begin to thank God for restoration. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Go ahead and bless God. When you were asking, your prayer was very loud. Now it is time to give thanks. Stop whispering. Stop whispering. Thank God. Show your gratitude to God. Show your thanks to God. Don't whisper your thanksgiving. You did not whisper when you were praying. Pray, make sure your thanks is heard. Thank God. Thank God for answering. Thank God for lifting you up. Thank God for restoring you. Thank God for taking you back to where you belong. Thank God for restoring all that has been stolen from you. Thank God that you are free. Thank God that the Lord has delivered you. Thank God that the Lord has set you free. Thank God that the Lord has made all things brand new. Thank God that you have been restored by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we are grateful, Lord. We believe. We speak. Therefore, we receive. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for helping us to pray, Holy Spirit. We could not have done it without you. The area that you wanted us to touch, you did. Ours is to, do, to talk, to pray, to ask. Yours is to do it. We are confident that you will do it. Because you said that you are with us. And that you will take us back there again. And you said that you will make sure that we see it come to pass. You said it will surely come to pass. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you because we are brand new. Thank you because all things are passed away. Thank you because we are a new person. Thank you because we begin to walk in your prepared place for us. Thank you because we, begin, begin, we are beginning to walk on the path to our expected end. Thank you because you are our God. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. Thank you because you have done it. Thank you because you will, will begin to see it in our lives beginning from right now. In the name of our Lord.